Well, hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here, glad you're stopping by. Um, so I stupidly deleted the last video that I made. Well, not a chili video, but the, ch the video I made for uh, Let's Talk Games. And that was my Modern Warfare 2 2022 review. And uh, I thought it turned out pretty well. Um, I usually, whenever I record something, uh, I go through a process. I record it, upload it, delete it from my machine. And I empty the recycle bin. Usually I wait a few days to empty the recycle bin. But for some odd reason, I decided to empty the recycle bin today uh, after I deleted the video. So I'm remaking this video uh, about Modern Warfare 2 2022. Um, the campaign, anyways. Uh, multiplayer is not out yet until, I believe, next... Actually, yes, this week. Uh, at the end of this week we'll have the multiplayer and we'll actually do some deep diving into that um probably not the day of because that's the day i get married and i'm not going to take time playing a game from marriage marriage is number uno that's the most important thing games come second third fourth fifth games just come sometimes but anyways uh i wanted to talk about it while it's still fresh on my mind uh if you pre-ordered the game uh you got access to the actual campaign uh this week or it was i think it may have been last week but uh you got a hold of the game uh the campaign anyways you got to play through that um you know if you played the modern warfare from i think it was 2018 um you kind of know what you're getting here um it's but but there's a caveat to this um this is not the kind of call of duty that you was expecting I know whenever you think of Call of Duty, you think of these big, giant, massive uh, action set pieces, explosions, and all this stuff. And you're not wrong. Uh, that still happens in this Call of Duty, but not to the rate you would expect from any of the campaigns. Now, I am one of those guys that's played through every single Call of Duty campaign since the first Call of Duty came out. I'm really old. I'm not a boomer. I'm not quite a boomer, but... Uh, you know, I think the first Call of Duty came out 2004, 2005, but I played every single one of the campaigns um, up until then. And I know uh, Black Ops 4 didn't have a campaign, and a lot of the campaigns can be good, bad, or mediocre. Um, but usually the World War II games are the ones I usually dive into, which uh, might be a bad... Uh, uh, opinion, but I really liked Vanguard's uh, Vanguard as a whole, actually, for the most part. Uh, I, I get tired of Call of Duty from time to time. Usually how it works is the new Call of Duty comes out, I play through the campaign, then I play some multiplayer for a couple of weeks, and then I stop playing it, and maybe I'll jump in and out from time to time. But, um, yeah, usually I, you know, I, I like the Call of Duty campaigns, most of them anyways. Um, and this one's no different. Um, and like I said, if you're look, coming into this Call of Duty thinking it's going to be all guns blazing, you're only partially right. Um, because there's some actually pretty cool levels in this game uh, that um, revolve around stealth. And did you know that Call of Duty is a horror game? Well, we didn't know that, but you'll see what I mean. I'm not going to dive into spoilers, um, but there are some cool sections in here that... Uh, break away from you know the uh, shooting and explosions. Uh, a lot of self sections, and it, it, I mean it's it's weird because uh, you don't really expect that out of Call of Duty. I know Vanguard has some moments like that, and I believe the first Modern Warfare, uh, they, they some of them have self sections, but not to this degree, uh, especially during the final missions of the game, um, which. You know, some of it's done really well, and some of it's annoying, especially the fact that near the end you have these units that are complete bullet sponges. And this game is kind of difficult, to be honest with you. Uh, I was playing it on uh, regular uh, regular difficulty. Yeah, usually whenever I play a campaign, in the hard, most, most of the time... The first time through, just to get the story, I usually play on easy mode. Uh, that way I can go through it and get the story. And sometimes I'll go back and play on harder difficulties, depending what the game is. Usually it's Halo or Gears of War. Um, but usually the Call of Duty, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not completely crazy. 
and uh, hate myself. You know, I, I hated myself through Elden Ring, but it was really great. And we're not going to compare this game to Elden Ring by any sort of the imagination. But, um, yeah, this game definitely has some difficulty spikes. And I would go ahead and admit, I switched from uh, regular to recruit uh, near the end of the game because it got to the point where it was annoying uh, that some of these uh, enemies were just bullet sponges and it made it not fun. Um, but, but me saying that, um, there are some really cool things that happen during these moments where you have to create, uh, weapons on the fly when you craft. It has a crafting system in a Call of Duty game, which is weird. Um, and it works. I mean, it works. Um, it does have some nail biting moments during these, uh, parts of the gameplay that, um, you know, you make the wrong move, then you're kind of fucked. Uh, but if you can do this stuff on the fly, kind of get it down, and sure, you might die a few times, but once you figure it out, what you need to do, what you need to craft, and get up and personal with these people, and usually you can take them down with just stabbing them with uh, these weapons you make. And like I said, I'm not going to spoil the game. Um, this is more of a spy thriller espionage type game, which is different, um, if that makes sense. It's kind of like watching, like, a Tom Clancy movie, or may maybe Rainbow Six, uh, Ghost Recon, stuff like that. It's really, really, uh, like I said, it's not heavy, heavy on action like you would think. Um, and it's surprising. It's actually pretty well done. Um, did I like the campaign better than Modern Warfare 2018? Um, somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, 2018 was a pretty good refresh for the series. Um, to be honest, and I might be saying it might be 2019. I think it was 2018. Um, I, Call of Duty is kind of just you've played one, you've played most of them for the most part. You they kind of stick together. Uh, so I might get the years wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was good. Um, I had fun during it, uh, except for like I said, the stealth sections, and there's a lot of it. Um, there's 17 chapters, I believe. Uh, not a very long game. Um, depending on what you play on, maybe five to six hours, maybe shorter than that. If you play completely on recruit and you know what you're doing, if you want to do some type of speed runs, uh, the graphics quality is actually a step above uh, last year's Call of Duty. Uh, I know they switched to a new engine, which looks pretty nice, especially if you have a big TV 4K. I was playing on a 75-inch 4K television, and, you know, it looked great. Uh, honestly, did. I didn't see many glitches. Now, I do know there has been some glitches that people have spotted out in the campaign. Uh, I haven't played the multiplayer, which is not available yet, so I can't really give you any insight of that. I do hear good things about it. Um, now, one of the cool things I would think, and this is just me, this, this could be a really cool game mode. Um, so... Uh, if you take the stealth sections from the single player and do a Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Spies versus Merc mode, that would be really cool if they did that. I don't know if they will, but uh, that would be kind of cool. I don't know if they're going to do a Zombies game this year. Um, I don't know what their big thing is. I know they're going to be pushing for Warzone 2, but I don't know about Zombies. I don't think that's uh, uh, this year. Um, they may be taking a break since... Zombies last year was pretty bad, but there's been a three-year cycle uh, whenever they make these games, so uh, they usually switch studios, and I believe Treyarch's next, or Sledge. I, I think Treyarch's next. Um, now, I think they're going to slow down on yearly releases of Call of Duty. I don't know if that's this year or next year, but I believe what, uh, in the next couple of years, uh, you won't see a Call of Duty every year. You may see more as a live service, and that's probably what they're going to try to turn it into, uh, which they already kind of do with Warzone anyways. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, this game, I played this on the Xbox Series X, um, and like I said, it played and ran great. Uh, uh, usually the Call of Duty games run really well. The engines are pretty well optimized. The controls are tight, as always. Um, if you played a Call of Duty game, you know what you're expecting here. Uh, there's not much else I can say about it. 
Um, I don't really want to put a score on it, but for some people, they like scores, I would say, 8 out of a 10 easily. Um, and, you know, that might be understanding it. Some people are going to like uh, the campaign for some of the new things it does, and some people are going to despise it. Uh, for me, as somebody that's been on the series for so long, I kind of think that uh, it's definitely uh, worth a try. This isn't one of those games that's on Game Pass. Uh, I've had this pre-ordered for months, months and months. They do have multiple versions. There's the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, which I believe is $59.99, and the there is the cross-gen bundle, which is $69.99. That gives you access to both versions. Then you got the PC for $69.99. Uh, so just being luxury and you're a next-gen console owner, you're going to have to spend the next-gen tax, which uh, sucks. It does suck because most games are not worth $70. But the Call of Duty game is usually worth the money. Um, just because all the content you do get, yeah, they're going to try, they're going to sell you microtransactions, battle passes, season passes, skins, uh, currencies, uh, in the multiplayer. Um, that's pretty much a sad but given thing now with gaming in 2022. Um, but yeah, if you, if you've been looking forward to the new Call of Duty, uh, I don't think it's a bad uh, investment, um, especially the campaign. Uh, again, most people don't play the campaigns, but uh, I'm not most people, and I do like the campaigns, and I do think they did a good job this year. Uh, Infinity War, uh, good job, Infinity War. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Next couple games we'll be playing through is The Quarry. We're going to finish The Quarry uh, and play Tell Requiem. And I think we have a couple more uh, we're going to try to finish up. we got Bayonetta 3 coming out. Um, of course, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And God of War Ragnarok. So it's big time, big time, big time. A lot of, a lot of games coming out. i got a big backlog I need to finish. Uh, so I, I still haven't touched things like Death, Death Proof. Is it Death Proof? Deathloop. Deathloop, I'm sorry. Well, that's cool. I just got a subscriber during recording uh but yeah we got a lot of games to cover um you know i like to continue doing this um i'm going to try before uh halloween i usually try to do this every year so keep an eye uh it's not going to be uh on my wedding day and it's not going to be on the next day uh maybe wednesday maybe possibly uh we're going to stream night of the living dead i do this every year for the halloween season um, so keep an eye out for that. You guys can come hang out. We'll watch Night of the Living Dead together, but I'll see you guys soon.